Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld. I'm a principal architect at Dell, one of the leads on the Crowbar and OpenStack projects. Uh, this is one of my No Frills videos. Uh, we are going to talk about how to install Crowbar, uh, just installing Crowbar, so building a dev environment on VMware. Uh, you could do it on any VM host that would support 64-bit uh, Ubuntu 1010. We're just going to stick to VMware Workstation for now. It's simple and popular. Uh, it's a great way to just get Crowbar running. Uh, this video is going to take you through that install process and then we'll I'll do another video that shows you how to actually set up something in Crowbar. Uh, so let's get rolling. First thing you need to know is you must, absolutely must, set up your uh, host networking correctly. Uh, Crowbar has a DHCP server uh, and you need to disable that. Uh, you want to connect your host adapter to your uh, network here so that you can use your browser from your desktop over into the uh, Crowbar server. And you also need to set the IP range to match what you're using for Crowbar. In this case, we're using defaults. Uh, so it's going to be 192.168.124.0. Uh, when you set it up like this with the bridging and without DHCP, that'll allow you to hit the Crowbar server from your desktop. Uh, we also set up a second network. Crowbar uses uh, at least two NICs uh, by default, uh, and that's going to be 192.168.122 is the subnet for that NIC. So those will be our two networks that we use uh, while we go through and set up Crowbar. So the first thing we need to do for Crowbar is build the admin server. That will be a custom VM. Uh, just as a standard Linux system, we're going to keep our cores and processors the same, we're going to use host only networking. That's the networking change we just did. All these things can be standard. Uh, but we are going to customize the hardware. This is all fine. So this isn't in entirely right. We need to come in and make a couple of changes. One is for the admin server, you must have at least a gig of RAM. It will not complete the install with less than a gig. We also want to go in and we want to add uh, our second NIC. So we're in here, network adapter. So we're going to use that second uh, virtual NIC bridge, virtual network that we had set. So we need that in here. And for our CD, we need to choose the Crowbar CD. So in this case, I'm going to use the open source build. This is on release day. There is a later one, 11.08.01, uh, that's available. Or, of course, you're welcome to build your own. So I'm going to set that. And so in the end, I have a hard disk, a gig of RAM, two networks, the primary network being on my bridged host. And now I'm ready to go. So I can start this up, and it's going to run through the ISO install. The way the ISO, and I don't want any tools or need any tools here, the way it's going to run is it's going to do the ISO install and start building up the ISO um, to create a base system, uh, at which point it'll I'll be able to log in and finish the Crowbar install. We used to do a complete automated install. It's actually in two pieces because uh, you might want to change the networking uh, or some other bar clamps or add things. So we, we stop the install to give you a chance to make adjustments. Uh, in this video we're just going to go straight through uh, and I'll show you that process. But in the future you might want to tweak or change. So this is going to go for a little while. I'm going to pause and come back. Okay, so our install process is uh, come to the point where we now have uh, the base preceded machine and set, set up so I can log in, which I'll do, OpenStack, OpenStack is our login and password. Uh, so I'm now logged into the admin server, but there's nothing installed in it. So I need to install Crowbar, which I will do. I need to be root. OpenStack once again, and then I need to be in the uh, TFTP directory for Ubuntu and the extras directory from there. That's where the installer is. So here's the install directory. I just need to install and provide the name 
of the admin server. So in this case, what I want is uh, I can call it anything. I'm going to call it demo.crowbar.org, uh, and at this point, it's going to kick off the install and get things running. Um, and it's just going to take some time. I'll come back when something interesting happens. So at this point in uh, the deployment, what we've got is we've built the Chef server, we've put in all the pieces and parts for Chef, uh, bar and Crowbar is now installing itself at Bootstraps using the Chef server that's installed. Uh, so it's actually transitioning and renaming the the system to the name that we gave it. Uh, it's basically bringing itself up. So as we get further and further into the install, we'll actually be able to start using Crowbar services uh, like the web page and the Chef server, even though they're not, um, the install hasn't finished. So we can wait for the install to finish. In a minute or two, I'm actually going to flip over and, and start showing you some of the services that are available, uh, even in the middle of the install. So at this point, you can see that we've got uh, a whole bunch of states are showing up. These are the states that Crowbar uses as it brings up nodes. Uh, so this is uh, discovered hardware installing. It's installing the system and transitioning uh, through these different states. At this point, we should be able to start actually seeing Crowbar uh, coming in, which we did. Uh, Crowbar normally will start with a uh, login prompt. It'll ask you for authentication, it'll, which is Crowbar Crowbar. Put login for that. Um, this is the Crowbar UI that's already up. Here's the demo server. You can see it's this is the state that we just were showing you. It's transitioning through, um, and it's brought up a whole bunch of uh, capabilities. So all these are the roles in Chef, uh, which are deployed as uh, Crowbar bar clamps, and it's bringing in the Crowbar deployer. These are the internal operations bar clamps, DNS, Ganglia, IPMI, uh, logging, Nagios, networking, NTP. All these are sort of the default pieces. Not of, all of them are required. You could turn off Nagios, um, Ganglia, things like that. Those are optional. Um, but this is this is the node sort of working through its state. When it comes to full ready, it's going to show that it's going to switch to green. Um, we're actually jumping in beforehand, um, before the install is finished. Uh, because the services are up, it's using Crowbar to install Crowbar uh, as part of the bootstrap. And let me show you also same thing is true. Here is the uh, 192.168.124.10. I'm using the bridge network to uh, hit them from my browser, my desktop browser. Temper with cookie is going to happen when you do repeated installs. Uh, so what we can do is clear the cookie. Uh, it's just Chef Security. So for this site, here is my Chef uh, cookie for my last install. Just accept that, delete it, and I should be able to log in to my fresh uh, Chef server. Now, Chef is running completely standalone. Uh, part of our install is a standalone Chef server. Um, admin password to get logged into Chef. Uh, Crowbar doesn't have its own database. It stores all its data in, it, uh, in Chef. So anything that you change in Chef will be reflected in Crowbar and vice versa. Uh, we feel like that's an important design consideration because we want to be able to leverage uh, cookbooks and recipes for Chef. Uh, and then so you can actually see the admin node uh, that we've created. So here's the admin node demo crowbar org. Uh, it's been up for 17 minutes. Uh, and here's its IP address. So all this is tied together. Uh, the install is still moving. When it actually is completed, we're going to see this light turn green. And I will come back at that point. Okay, so uh, we just finished the install. Uh, you can see the final states. It's moving from installed to readying and ready. Uh, so everything's finished. Chef Client has, has completed its work. Uh, and we're now at the, the end of the Crowbar install. We're back to the prompt. In Crowbar, you can see that we now are at this ready state. Uh, and we've been up for a little while during the, that whole install process. Uh, and I'm gonna, sh I'm not gonna tour you through Crowbar right now. Uh, my goal is to show you how to build a base system, and then I'm gonna do a whole other video about how Crowbar operates and, and let you take it to the next step. So before we can do that, we need to go back to uh, our virtualization host and create a node for Crowbar to manage. 
and the process for doing that's almost identical to what we went through before. We're going to create do our own operating system. Um, we're going to call that this um, just crowbar node. Oops, I already have had one. Uh, in this case, we need at least a half gig of RAM to make the, the demo go. I think I'm going to go up to um, 768 just for fun. I need to be on that same host only network for this. Uh, these defaults are fine. Before I kick things off, I want to customize my um, VM a little bit. I don't need the ISO. Uh, we're going to be doing network boots for this. And I want to add that second NIC. So here's this other network adapter. Remember, VMNet2 is the second network. Uh, and our networking bar clamp by default is going to create some uh, VLANs and be able to attach it to VLANs also if your network is set up for that. Um, once again, if you go in the networking bar clamp, you can configure things and change them around. But the big important thing here was no ISO two NICs. The first NIC needs to be on this host network. So that's it. I uh, should be ready to go ahead and boot. So we're going to go and boot. Uh, at this point, instead of doing an ISO install, I'm doing a network boot. Uh, we've already jumped into our DHCP client. We're doing our discovery image. Uh, the first image is this small discovery image. It just allows Crowbar to find it. Once it goes through this cycle, um, you're going to see it jump in behind uh, behind me on the crowbar screen. It's got to load that ISO and you'll notice we're pretty busy on the networking side over here as we build up that temporary image. So while we're doing that I'm going to take a second and show two of the other servers that we build on the 192.168, the admin server. Uh, one of those, they're on port 80, is Nagios. Uh, Nagios admin password to get into Nagios, and then the other one is Ganglia. Uh, and so, if you want, you can actually see this is the the network traffic and the load. You can see we're working pretty hard during the install, so you can see that. Um, the graphs that Ganglia is capturing as, as the admin node was installed. And the same is going to be true with um, Nagios. So w this is the server that we set up. Uh, it's telling me I'm low in memory, which is entirely right. And uh, as new machines are brought up, they will be registered in uh, Nagios automatically. Uh, and then the different services that they deploy will also be set up. That is a function of our recipes um, it is not necessarily a crowbar. Any system that you add or change, you can interconnect by modifying the recipes to do the cross-linking. Uh, and you can use the ones we've included as reference examples. So back over here with crowbar, in the crowbar UI, what you see now is we just refreshed and added this new discovery node. So this H uh, name, H MAC address name here is our discovery node, discovery name. Uh, once the system is has been discovered, Crowbar is going to tell it to start installing it. It's actually going to put it into a pause state, uh, which is what I'm waiting for. And that, that pause state is, allows you to make further deployment decisions. So uh, this is basically the process for bringing up additional capacity. Uh, for a, an OpenStack deployment, we'd recommend at least three um, nodes. But for something like... Uh, or some of the other bar clamps that are surfacing. One or two nodes is probably sufficient for you to start playing with, with Crowbar and getting a hang of it. So what you'll see right now, we just reached our uh, discovered state. We're now in a, in a pause. This node is discovered and waiting to be used. Uh, I'm going to stop here and we'll uh, commence in a second video where I show you how to take advantage of uh, these new resources and provision them into your system.